Listen, I won't lie, I had very, very low expectations going into this game in terms of the entertainment factor of watching this matchup because let's be real, not only are the Bulls playing one of the worst teams in the league who are without the majority of their key players, but it also being the end of the season, a meaningless game for both teams, and the Bulls also sitting their core guys in DeMar DeRozan, Nikola Vucevic, Alex Caruso, in addition to Drummond and Io, who have already been sitting out due to injury. Like, I almost debated on even watching this game, or at least watching it very passively, because you're probably not going to see NBA-level basketball being played in this game. But sure enough, this actually ended up being one of the more entertaining games for the Bulls on the season. I don't know if that says more about just how bad the Bulls have been this year and how depressing they've been to watch, or the fact that you had young, hungry players out there, some of them looking for contracts next season, that just made this game all the more exciting. Now, it's funny because when the game started and you saw just how poorly the Bulls got off from the jump, I think they fell down by as many as 16 in the first quarter, just looked lost out there and couldn't get their rhythm going offensively. And after that first quarter or thereabouts, I tweeted, see, this is why I don't want to go through another rebuild because it's really hard watching bad basketball. And I know some will say, well, it's not like this team has been anything exciting or fun to watch this season anyway. So why not try and start fresh, which may be a different topic for a different day where we can debate that because there is an argument for both sides. But the reason I say it was funny was because shortly after that, the Bulls turned things on, started playing with much better pace, ball movement and the shots started going down. Let's be real, they started playing a lot better when they brought Adama Sunogo in the game who the Bulls decided not to start despite being without Vucevic and Andre Drummond. They went with the small ball lineup where you had Craig I believe was playing the five and the Wizards picked that lineup apart. But Sunogo, the unsung hero of this game, has barely played all season. He's played 31 minutes all year long in just eight games a lot of those being mop-up minutes, comes in, plays more minutes in this game than he has all season long, 35 minutes, and puts up a 20-20 and 20 game. The only rookie not named Victor Wimbanyama to do that this season. 22 points on 8 for 18 from the floor, 20 rebounds, 10 offensive rebounds, and finishes with a team high plus 11 on the night. And look, I'm fully aware that Sonogo isn't doing this in a real game against the best competition when the stakes are high. I know this is more or less the equivalent of Patrick Williams scoring 35 points or whatever it was in a meaningless game of the last game of the season a couple years back against the Timberwolves. I get that he's still a pretty raw player and has a lot to work on, and I get all that, but I have to say I was very impressed with how he showed up in effectively his NBA debut where he got real minutes. He hustles, is physical, has great mechanics and footwork for a big man, crap the offensive glass for second chance points and for me if you hustle and you give it your all when you're out there you've won me over now do i think sunogo is ever going to become a legit piece that the bulls can work with for the future probably not need to see him play like this when he's going up against the likes of Embiid or Jokic before I'm going to go crazy, but I appreciated the effort and I appreciated that he was impacting winning and was evident in how the Bulls turned the game around when they started having him play in the paint. Sonogo, first career double-double, career high in points and rebounds, great game for him. We had another career high as well, well actually there was a few, but one of them being Dalen Terry who got the start, played 27 minutes, scored 17 points, was 6 for 8, 4 rebounds, 8 assists. Obviously, we saw that incredible poster dunk he had towards the end of the game to put the Bulls up 6 with less than 2 minutes to go that had me running around the room laughing. Terry's got some moves, man. Like, he's slowly but surely improving those handles, and when you combine that with his athleticism, his grit, his energy, I'm not going to get ahead of myself here because, again, this was a low-stakes game, but we have seen these bursts from Terry when he's given the opportunity opportunity and he has been improving his passing his decision making and his efficiency on offense still a lot of work to do but it's good progress nonetheless and then of course another career high in henry drell first of all i don't think anyone expected us to hear there are 500 drills out there from stacy king this season but man this kid showed up in closing out the game really on both ends of the floor nine points hit a couple big threes in the fourth two steals and a block not really sure what the future holds for this kid as he's on a two-way contract for the bulls but the bulls could always use some extra shooting also speaking of shooting did javon carter really have 20 points and 12 assists in this game off of the bench like what he shows up in the 81st game of the season when the games don't matter anymore. I mean, some of that you could say, well, maybe he just wasn't given the right opportunities, and if you had actually given him more minutes, he would have performed better. But I don't know. He had been given opportunities throughout this season, and more often than not, just didn't show up well with his decision-making on the court and poor shot selection. But tonight, coming off the bench, 37 minutes, 20 points, 
8 for 15 shooting, 4 for 8 from 3. I mean, we saw this from Javon at the start of the season where he was shooting it really well and then just kind of fell off from there and started falling out of the rotation. But great game for Javon tonight, season high in both points and assists. We almost saw another career high from Javonte Green. I was disappointed that Billy Donovan took him out. I get why he took him out, didn't have him play the closing minutes of the fourth quarter. But 25 points, a career high that Javonte Green just set a few games back tonight he had 20 points i believe it was in just in the first half alone but ended up not playing that much in the second half and only ended up finishing with 24 points but still crazy what javante green has been able to do i've talked about that ad nauseum you guys know that already so kobe white also played in this game which i was a little surprised by like the games have no impact on the standings you've got one potentially two do or die games in the play-in that you're kind of going to need kobe white for kobe's played the most minutes of his career this season does he really need to be playing but I can live with it, though, because Kobe's young and can always use this as a game to keep his rhythm going. Uh, I would have lost it if I saw DeMar DeRozan or Vucevic on the floor in this game. And Kobe also played limited minutes, wasn't part of the Bulls' closeout lineup, even though it was a close game. Uh, Kobe had a good game. I wouldn't say it was anything to write home about. He still has issues in terms of finishing at the rim. He got more and more comfortable over time in getting the basket and scoring in this one. 20 points overall, 4 rebounds, 4 assists. Also, Torrey Craig, 15 rebounds in this game, 3 for 4 from 3, 11 points. Points, made up for it a little bit for that debacle of a play on the uh, backboard dunk attempt against the Knicks the other night. Uh, and he was also the veteran leader out there in the closing lineup to help the Bulls finish off the Wizards. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how the Bulls approach this game on Sunday against the Knicks because this game has been flexed to be on national TV. Not really sure why, but are they going to send their B team out there and keep these guys resting? I would hope so, but I also would not be surprised if Billy Donovan opts to have DeMar, Vujovic, and Caruso get a little bit of run in before the play-in in limited minutes. The Knicks are still going to be trying. They're going to try to win that game because they're tied right now with the Bucks for the second seed, and they could potentially fall to fourth if they lose and the Cavs win. So they're going to be trying. Well, the Bulls will not be. But anyway, last game of the season before we get to the play-in game on Wednesday. Let me know what you guys thought of this game. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.